All right, um, today I'm going to show you how to host your own abiotic factor dedicated server with Steam CMD on a Windows machine. You'll need to own the game with your Steam account since this will require you to log in with your Steam account to make a dedicated server and update the server when patches roll out. All right, let's get to it. Recommended system requirements. You need at least a Windows 11 or a 10 machine. And the hardware, you need at least a quad core CPU, at least 3.0 gigahertz. 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, 15 to 20 gigabytes free storage, and a solid state drive recommended for the server to sit on. And plus, a stable internet connection. Do not run this on dial up. Ability to configure firewall and router for port forwarding. And the ports you'll need to forward is 7777 and 27015. All right, now you'll have to download Steam CMD if you haven't already. First off, download Steam CMD if you haven't already on the machine you'll be hosting your server. So simply just open up a browser and just type in Steam CMD downloads and make sure it's on this one. Go to Steam CMD, web developer community. Click on Windows click on the links to download the files so while you are still downloading steam cmd let's just go ahead to your c drive and we'll just make a new folder called steam cmd all right okay once you have steam cmd downloaded it should be in the downloads folder just go ahead and right click hit extract all you can browse and we'll go to this pc C drive and we're gonna look for that new folder you just created called CCMD let's go ahead and select the folder and just hit extract and once it's in this folder it should just only have this steamcmd.exe file and once you double click on it it will go ahead and populate all these other files that you need here and that's it just close it out once you do have steamcmd downloaded well now go ahead and launch the command prompt so go to your start menu just type in cmd and it should be this black terminal command prompt all right and what we want to do is cd change directory and then c colon backslash no not backslash what am i talking about yeah backslash backslash steam cmd and now you should have this right and then now you'll want to copy this entire command in there I will go ahead and put this command line down in the description below. All right. And then what you want to do is put in your Steam account name in here. And what this will do is create a new folder called Abiotic Factor into your C drive. And it's going to grab all the required files for Abiotic Factor. And once you do have it all downloaded, you should have all these files right here. Okay. And once you do put in your Steam account name and you hit enter, it's going to probably ask for a password. Uh, go ahead and put in your Steam account password in there. And it's probably going to prompt for a MFA. So put in your MFA code in there if it does prompt for it. All right. Now we'll configure the server settings and we'll need to navigate to the new folder, which we're already in. You can close this out once you do have everything downloaded already. Now we'll need to navigate to a biotic factor which is within the folder binaries and win 64 okay now what you want to do is make a batch file and before we start doing that you want to change your view so your view section up here and check mark the file name extensions this will allow us to make a batch file quite easily so you will want to do text file and then just say run server I'm gonna name it 2 because I already have one in here and then what you want to do is go all the way at the end take out the txt leave the dot okay the dot is very important leave it there and then just change this to BAT do you want to change it just say yes alright and now it should have this little wheel icon right there and you just right click and edit now you know we don't we don't have anything right well we are about to so you want to copy this entire command in there okay and I'll kind of briefly explain 
All right, so leave all of this um, as it is. Uh, the max recommended players is six for stability. If you do have really beefy hardware and internet connection, you can max this to 24. That's the maximum players that are allowed on a dedicated server. But for stability, keep it at six. And keep the port at 777, query port 27015. And this is quite the important part. This is where you will put your server name, password, or server password, not your server name, password, your server password for people to join, okay? And then you put in your Steam, what your server name in here. Once you have that, just go ahead and file save. And <laughs> this is very optional, uh, this whole command line. I'll go ahead and put this entirety in there as well in the description down below. But this is the sandbox settings, which you can configure whether you want the powers to go off at night or the day and night cycle. You can just keep it entirely just day. Uh, you could change the multiplier of the enemy healths, the player damage multipliers. I'll kind of show you guys what that looks like. Uh, but first, we need to navigate to it. All right, so we need to go all the way back to Abiotic Factor. All right, now we need to go to Saved, Config, and Windows Server. And as you can see, I already have a sandbox settings.ini, but you actually really need to create one by itself. So call it sandbox settings. Dot I and I and what we're gonna do is just delete this so make sure it's sandbox settings dot I and I okay and then you should right click edit and you're gonna want to paste all these settings in here and what this is gonna do is gonna allow you to customize your server to whatever you choose to be okay so just read these comments and just change them as you go. If it does have a false or true, you'll need to change them from false to true if you want them for loot respawn to be enabled. Uh, the day night cycle multiplier, you can change it from, I believe the maximum value is 2.0. So from 1.0 to 2.0, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, okay? You guys know more than me. Feel free to share with everyone in the world. All right. So, yep, just go ahead and go through these, read them, and you can keep them as default if you want to. All right, once you're done making changes, go ahead, just file and save, okay? And then you'll need to go back to your run server.batch, and you'll need to input this. Sandbox and path equals sandbox settings.ini. Okay, so we're pretty close to being done with setting up our server. Now, if I have to remind you, you need to port forward 777 and 27015 on your router. Please Google your model and just type in how do I port forward, I don't know, a Netgear router, your model number. Just type that in the Google and it should show you how to port forward but I'm going to leave a port forwarding demo just so you guys can get the hint of it, okay? You will need to log into your router to achieve port forwarding. If you have never done this, I will kind of show you how you can. Just launch command prompt on your dedicated server. Type in ipconfig. Take note of the IPv4 address. Take note of the default gateway IP. Open up a browser. Type in the default gateway IP address. If you don't know the login information at this point, it should be on your router with a sticker with the username and password. I highly recommend changing the default password if you haven't already, just for security reasons. If you don't know how to port forward on your modem router, you may just need to Google it for your specific model. But in my case, I am going to log into my Asus modem. I'm gonna go to WAN, port forwarding, add a profile, and add in the ports that need to be forwarded to my dedicated servers. All right, now we're gonna go back to the Win64 
So abiotic factor, abiotic factor, binaries, win64. And we're going to run that batch file just to start up the server. Just kind of test it out. And this is kind of what it looks like. All right. So once you see the screen right here, um, all these sessions right here, then that means it's up, right? So we're going to close this out. Because we know it's working. And to close out your server, you just hit the close. And you're going to have this command line, terminate batch shop. You just hit yes to close out the server. All right, the only way I've got this to work was doing a direct connect. Um, so you'll have to supply your friends your public IP address. Okay, and how to do that. Just open up a web browser, just type in what is my IP address. All right, and I usually prefer the what is my IP address.com. Just click into that, and you want to copy that IPv4 address right here. Okay, copy that, put it somewhere safe, or put it in your Discord channel, supply it to your friends. That are going to join your server but keep this intact okay all right if you guys don't want to convert your single player to a dedicated server just simply run the server.batch file and this is going to start a brand new game for you guys if you guys want a fresh start with you and your friends but if you do want to convert your single player session to a dedicated server follow the next section and this will show you how to do it okay stay tuned if you do want to convert your single player to a dedicated server, this is how you're going to do it. Okay. So since I'm on my virtual machine or my other dedicated server, I'm going to go back to my desktop and this is exactly the path you want to go to. All right. And we'll go back to our C drive. And before you start this, make sure you view view section on the top of your file explorer has the hidden items check mark okay all right you're gonna need to go to users this is the machine that you have your single player saved on okay to make that clear so and then choose your user profile which is my case Rakuza app data loco abiotic factor saved saved games and if you have multiple saves in here you can simply just click into them and look at the worlds and this is science ends that's my other world but my only world but if you do have multiple worlds this is how you can find out the name of the worlds that you want to turn into a dedicated server okay so what you want to do is copy all this and I already have my server already in here. I'm probably gonna blur this out. But what we're doing is we're in the abiotic factor folder that we just created with the Steam CMD, remember? And what you wanna navigate to is abiotic factor and then saved, saved games and server. And what we want to do is copy all this, throw all this in there. And what we'll want to do is replace the files in the destination. Okay. And then what we want to do is click into worlds. This is on the server. Okay. Dedicated server. And what we want to do is, so what we're going to do is probably delete this. And then we're going to rename this to cascade. Okay, all right, now what we're gonna do is go back to our server and we're gonna run it. Okay, now we're at the loading screen or menu screen. All right, and once you've done the tutorial, you'll want to just do the enter the facility, uh, join a server, and it's never gonna pop up here. I've never got it to work. So I'll, you just need to do a direct connect and choose IP address. 
and type in that public IPv4 address that you got from what is my IP address. Put in the port 7777 and then that password, right? But it worked. Okay. Oh yeah, and look at that. We have all of our stuff here. And we have... Yeah, this is all of my single player things. If you did find this helpful, please like and subscribe. This will help the channel grow, and I do plan out to put more dedicated server guides when time allows. Let me know down in the comments down below what you want to see next. Cheers, and I'll see you next time. Peace.